Okay, exciting times ahead. We've got a three undefeated, three that have been to haven't won, and um, including last year's current champion and Mr. Three, and also Mr. Three Time Mark Fennick. Absolutely useless bunch of you know what. Um, today I'm joined by our good friend Stefan Jagero. Steph, say hello. Hello. There we go. Steph's got a very bad connection, so I apologize <laughs> about that. But um, I've invited Stiff along this week because last week I've called Stiff the worst team in the competition and he ended up getting the win. And then I play him this week. So if he beats me, I'll be a bit embarrassed, but I still think he's the worst team in the competition. But uh, we'll see what happens. <laughs> All right. So, Stiff, um, let's get started. If you don't mind, we're going to go over a few bit of a preview and see who's going to be playing, uh, who plays who this week, and talk about the teams. Uh, first of all, what are your thoughts so far from the first two rounds? Yeah, it's been, um, well, for, for me personally, it's been difficult because I'm trying to work out uh, who's getting more midfield time and who's getting tackles and stuff. I, I picked a team full of um, potential more than anything, so um, it's hard for me, but um, you know, I look at other, like Coley's team, who's got a proven stars. But uh, whether they go any good this year is another story. So what's what's um, hard for you? Hard, just trying to find the right positions. I'm, I'm right now. I reckon if what if they keep performing like that, it's going to be my half back. What about Black Dilda that was at hey? the draft? that was at the draft? Is that what's hard for you? Trying to find the right position for it? Yeah. Yeah. Right. See, that was funny. That's comedy gold. All right. <laughs> um, what else do you think? Oh, at the moment, do you think you're like? How do you see it at the moment? You've got Jabronis and Sugar scoring very high, themselves scoring high so far for two rounds. You think it's probably still too early to get a trend? Who's the team with um, Dangerfield? That would be uh, Lossie, Seek and Destroy. Yeah, I reckon uh, that's going to be hard because he's going to be really uh, inconsistent, I have a feeling, this year. He's going to have one game that's awesome and one game that's shit, and he's going to be hard to really predict what he's going to do. Um, I don't know. Fife's going to go all right all year. You know, he's going to be pretty good. But then again, three hours shit. But um, it's, there's no real standouts. Goldie's probably the only real consistent player, I reckon, anymore. Not so much players, but what do you so far of the teams, do you think we've set a trend? Obviously, you've seen who started well, who hasn't started well. Do you think that will be a trend? Or do you think it might be like, like last year where someone like me won the first three games and didn't even make the finals? Yeah, I reckon it's going to be like that. I reckon it's going to be big. Once One week you'll get a score of 360, the next or nearly 400, the next you'll get in the sub 300s. It's just going to be a, one of those top to turvy years. I think because of the, the, the new um, interchange cap, it's sort of, I don't know, like it's sort of hard to predict. But then again, I could, I'm probably going to well off and there's probably going to be um, around six or seven, they're going to be some specific players that are just consistently awesome. But um, the start of the year has been really hard, I reckon. What do you reckon, Chris? What about your oh, team? Oh, no, no, no. Like, you're talking about things being hard. Talking... Oh, what's going on over there? You might deal with it. Anyway. I'm lying on bets. I'm lying on the bets where I usually get out. Hey, hey. Hello, Linda, if you're watching. <laughs> um, well, look, I just think at the moment it's still too early to tell. I mean, we don't know. We haven't really got into a, into a rhythm. People are still trying to figure out where the best teams are. Yeah. So, you know, it's just a small sample at the moment, but we need to, you know, once we realise exactly what's going on, and I think it still takes a couple more weeks to go. I mean, who knows? I've, I've scored... In fact, it's practically won a game. Like, I just thought, oh, every time I get a team of players that are playing Essendon, then I'm just whack them all in my team and, you know, utility and whatnot. But then they won last week, and you think, oh, maybe they're not going to get flogged every week. Because I've got, like, Lobie and Sam Gray this week, and... Um, I'm unsure of whether to play him or not, you know, because they might, Essendon might go all right, you don't know. But um, Carlton's the game. This is a family show, and you've talked about yeah. getting hard, you talk about whacking, you talk about flogging. Keep it clean, mate. What's that? Uh, I'm just being funny. All right, so let's go to our first team. Hope everyone likes my humour. Stiff, it went past Stiff, he didn't get it at all. All right, so first game, Steph, Seek and Destroy versus Rangers. So Seek and <laughs> Rangers Anonymous, yeah. So Seek and Destroy had a disappointing week last week after the first round they scored the highest. And Rangers, 
Uh, probably still trying to figure out the team. But oh well, on projections, we've got Vossi projected for 313. On current teams, it says they may change it. And Kenna is projected to get 290. So, have you had a chance to have a look at the teams or do we, do we let you know who they are? Uh, give us the main one. Give me the halfback and utility. All right. Well, Dangerfield and Prittis are, are going to stay there all year for second destroy. And I'm also, I believe, Fife and Joel Sell will stay there all year for Rangers Anonymous. So those won't change. Um, Kenner's team is probably going to stay the same. The only difference is I think you should take out Nathan Jones out of tackler and put either a Dane Zorko or Steve Liam Shields gets picked and play him as a tackler. Um, but, but the Western Royals game, they may not be going to tackle us. Liam Shields, wasn't he, didn't he have a wrist injury or something with his injury? Well, he's, he's been named this week, but it's still an extended squad. Okay, yeah. It's a hard one with Liam Shields. I don't know if I'd uh, risk it. But then have, so I guess you'd have a decent tackler as your interchange, so I don't know if you want to risk it, go ahead. Charlie Dixon as his half forward, but he's actually going to put Josh Jenkins as half. Uh, sorry, Charlie Dixon is full forward, and he's putting Josh Jenkins as his half forward. Now Jenkins obviously after after two rounds leaving Coleman. Okay, and who do you have as the half? Oh, you have Kennedy against Brown. Which way is going to be the start? No, no, you have Jenkins. Jenkins is his half forward. Oh, yeah, Jerk and Jenkins. Yeah. Dixon should go all right. I reckon they, they've given him a bit of a rocket after last week's piss and performance. And then you've got, uh, well, Jenkins is solid. I would go, yeah, it's not a hard pick. I'd probably go the other way around, but then again, I'm not that great. Yeah, um, yeah, go on. Well, he's taking out yeah, the crowd. Right. Well, I'm going to go anywhere else? Is he going to anywhere else? Playing bloody Carlton or Brisbane? Well, he's taking out the crowd. He has, who's playing free, right? The only other, the only thing is, um, yeah. Rossi, if you watch, if you're watching, uh, change your tackler around. You've got Hamish Hull as your tackler. He's not playing this week. So options there. You've got a, a Travis Boat. You've got a Riscatelli. Um, yeah, and so you have a choice there. Of what you want to do, even a James Kelly, really. So change your tackler around. Um, yeah. So that's that first game. Who do you think will win that game? The port game. Oh, I mean the the um, Rangers and I right, Rangers will win probably. Rangers will win over second destroy. Yep. All right. I reckon. Ken is you, mate. Ken is you. Yeah, just gonna get his team right though. But I reckon the um. I reckon it'll be a tough one as well. And I reckon Joel Sell playing first game at Geelong with the Paddy Dangerfield there could be a good game. So I reckon Rangers may get up there as well. But yeah, it's a thing. Dangerfield's first game at Virginia Park. So what's he gonna do? So, who knows? And Prittis needs to bounce back yeah. after last week. So, uh, next game. Oh, yeah. All right. Next game, Stiff, is Maltese Falcons versus Sugar Daddies. Uh, these teams here. Fennec is also projected for 313 this week, Maltese Falcons. Sugar Daddies actually projected for 349. So, that's actually the second best projected score of the round. Uh, these games here. Sorry? Who's pumping up his score? Oh, well, I'll go over that with you now. Um, his, Jarrett Wright has been good so far at half forward. He's got him half forward again. He plays Melbourne this week. Uh, the thing about him is he hasn't really got any other... Because Cameron's out, he hasn't really got any other forwards. And he's playing Robbie Gray at full forward, which I feel is being wasted. Um, maybe he can put Robbie Gray at half forward and Jarrett Wright at full forward. Who knows? But that, I just feel Robbie Gray's being wasted there. Um, Gazer at Utility, now he should play better than what he did last week and he's playing Carlton this week. And then he's got like Robert Murphy's been killing, hopefully he does nothing this week. And Trelaw at halfback with Lukey Dowhouse got 13 tackles last week. So Sugar's has Sugar can't find room at the moment for Mark Murphy can't find room for Bonds and Pally. So he's got a pretty good sign, he's still got Jerry Buchanan to come back in. Um, as for Maltese Falcons. His biggest problem so far has been the forward line. He, he can't find that consistency. Um, he's already looks like he's already dumped Travis Clark, and he's brought in Joe Danaher. So his forward lines Joe Danaher and Jack and Jack Gunston. 
and Jack, and then Jack Stevens and Armitage as a utility slash halfback have been pretty good, so he's sticking with them. Um, Nichols in the ruck against Gordon. This, who's who Gold Coast got again? Carlton. So Nichols in the ruck. That's a bit, you know, maybe 25 or 30 yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, and he and he gets his tackler back in Mitch Robinson that he's been missing all season. So, um, yeah, you know, that that could be a tough one as well. What do you think about that game? Uh, Sugar Daddy should should get up on that one. I think just by listening to your team there. Me too strong. I think I think Fennec focused too much on other teams this year, and I think he's going to have a bad year. Yeah. So. Yeah, cool, okay. Oh, well, Fennec, bad luck. Make sure the other people do their other teams next time. All right, so now we've got the next game, Steph. Jacob Chabronis versus Gods of Olympus. So this year's, this year's highest scoring team versus last year's champions, who are, who are yet to win a game, by the way. That's Michael, by the way. I don't know. Yeah, I figured that. All right, so... Um, all right, so Jacob Chabroni is actually projected to get the highest score this round. That's 351. Dude. Is your ear all right? You scratching your ear? And Mix actually, but in saying that, Mix actually projected to get 343. So this could be a very close, high scoring game. So it could be a pretty good game there. Um, Tom Lynch last year was absolutely awesome. Last week, shall I say, was pretty good. He's up against Carlton this week. I still think Jacob Chabroni needs, yeah, yeah, I, I needs to get Josh Hill out of the half ball line. Um, he shouldn't be there. Um, I mean, his other options, he can put it at half forward. And Where are we? Jacob's with bronies. His other options are half forward. He's got players like, I don't know, really. Josh Bruce from St. Kilda. Yeah. Well, he's playing um, Josh Hill from West Coast. Now, I don't know if he's really a half forward. So, Wouldn't you go Josh Bruce? Bruce, Bruce is your full forward and Lynch is your half forward? Yeah, that or maybe put in a Sean Higgins or someone or who knows, or Dusty Martin maybe. But yeah, that's, that's what he's done there. Yeah. And then he's left, so far his team is as last week, so he hasn't changed it just yet, but he may change it. Um, he's got Tom Mitchell Utility, he got 94 last week, so that was pretty pretty good. Yeah, he's going well. And then yeah. Luke, Luke Parker in the midfield as well, so he's doing very well as there. And Montagna is a halfback. Sammy Jacobs is up against Hampson. So he should have a good game, you think. And still got Trent Conchie yeah. into changing. He needs to take Sean Higgins out of tackle. So I'm pretty positive Jabroni's going to change his team. Yeah. You look, with those Sydney players, though, GWS usually does well against Sydney. So if they're going to have a down game, if Parker and, and Mitchell are going to have a down game, it'll be this one, I reckon. Well... We'll have to wait and see what happens, but you never know. I mean, they could get up. It's the same for World Adam Goods as well, so who knows? Yeah, um, Michael's yeah. Gods of Olympus have moved, after his sixth goal performance last week, has moved for Solo in the full forward, um, keeping Jack Rerold as half forward. He's actually gone Kurt Tippett at utility. Now, uh, I mean, Tim is, Tim is getting. Against well, against Mumford, I know. And he's been getting about 30 hit outs. He's getting a couple of goals. But so I don't know about that move either. Maybe he doesn't want to do that. I don't know. Um, he's got Johansson and... Who? Who's what? He's put Tippett as their utility. Michael's got Tippett at utility for some reason. I'm pretty sure he's going to put goals for him. Just oh, I've just been told by the crowd, I've got, a, I've got a live studio audience here, by the way, that he's just seen what his highest score could have been. So his projection of 343 is full of shit. I'm pretty sure he's going to have gold feed as utility. And, yeah. got, and his halfback will be, well, Tom Rockland's out now, so he's got to see if it was his um, halfback. He's got Isaac Smith to play. He's got um, his midfielders. He's got you know, McRae as well. So who knows what he's going to do there. But I, I, I'm still... I the, Hawks, the Hawks-Bulldogs game will be a high-possession game. I reckon anyone, any Hawks and Bulldogs midfielder is going to get a lot of touches. Well, Bulldogs will get about 41 possessions a game at the moment, so see what happens there. But yeah. I still think that... Um, I think Jabroni is going to be too strong. But 
I, I would have liked to, to have seen Michael's proper side so he can judge it. And he's been, you know, he's telling he's telling me get ready for it. He doesn't even set up his proper side. So come on, Mick, do your job. All right. Uh, next game, no dumplings versus I'm rolling. The uh, the local derby as, as you like between Dash and Coley. Two two of the better mates. The retard derby, Michael caught it. Yeah. Um, realistically, this is probably probably have a, gr a crowd of about two. Can't see anyone really interested in this. Um, the only person that will be clapping in the crowd is Coley himself, clapping himself because he thinks he's pretty good, even though he's never really won it. Um, this this game here, uh, no dumpers has got Eddie Betts and Steve Johnson. Uh, Zeeble's utility. He's going with Mundy and Sean the midfield. And Josh Kenny is halfback, and he's put Liam Pickett as his tackler. Um, Coley's gone on Lindsay Thomas and Kennedy as their forwards. Stephen Martin, Brandon Ellis, Cade Simpson, Hickey again, Tyler Adams, and Andrew Swallow. Um, what do you think of Stephen Martin? I've always had a thing for Stephen Martin. He's got a good name. Um, and just his, against, against Geelong, he's going to get more hit outs than usual. Um, he might not get that many, uh, get any goals or anything, but I don't think he'll go all right. Well, just to let you know, and for anyone out there that's interested, I've got a message from Dan Cole, Daniel Cole, the manager of On Roller, and let me just get my phone and I'll read this out to you all. The message... Hey, Cole, Cole, I've got an issue with Cole, you've got to sort me out. You have an issue? I've got, with, I've got a complaint. With who? With Cole. Oh, well, you're telling me. Right. This is from Daniel Cole. Steph Martin will be benched in round four if he doesn't get 70 at utility this week. He's definitely up for trade as he is being putrid. So everyone, Steph Martin's available if anyone wants to pick him up. Cole is listening Hi. to... Cole is listening to offers. Um, but look... Well, I don't know what he needs, but he needs to realise that Steph Martin's been up against Nick that first round. And then last week he was up against who did Brisbane play? Goldstein. So <coughs> just relax, Coley. Just relax. All right. I'm going to call and about Tals, but I didn't get him a trade. All right. We'll just let you know the projections that game. Dash is one of is uh, projected for two ninety eight, and Coley is projected for three twenty six. So I I think Coley's going to win this game. I think uh, Ke Fremantle's defence has been shocking. I think Kennedy will have a field day. And I think Dash's team's just no good, to be honest. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm deciding whether I play uh, Remolt or uh, Jack Darling as well. So, yeah, that, that, that West Coast game could, could be anything. Frio could go back to their defensive style and they might not score. Uh, so you don't know. So it's a little bit of a... Yeah, a little bit of an unknown quantity with Freo. I reckon, I reckon sooner or later they're going to have to tighten up on the defence. Uh, we'll, we'll see if Ross Lyon changes, huh? So, all right, and last game, Steph. So don't worry, everyone, we're going to get we're going to finish up soon. I know we've gone 18 minutes, but we're going to finish up soon. All right, me versus you. Now, you're actually projected for 328 this week with your team. So pretty high scoring. Yeah, and unlike Mick, I didn't stack my team to get the highest score. Well, considering you've been pretty bad, that's pretty impressive, Steph. Uh, I'm projected for 348. So uh, you've gone with 48. Yeah, 348. So you're, um, you've got, yeah, but as we know, it's, up, it's only two games. The so one could have a good game, and who knows what's going to happen. But you've gone with Hawkins and Rewalt. Um, Aaron Hall, who has been very impressive the first two rounds, you've got him at utility up against Carlton. Uh, Louis, Jordan Lewis, and Lockie Hunter in the, in the midfield. Hunter's been good, but I really hope Lockie Hunter does nothing this week, just to let you know. Um, yeah, Hawks don't tag. Well, that's true. Mummy in the ruck against his other his other former club, and we saw what he done last week against Geelong. Uh, Zach Merritt, who's been very good so far at halfback, and Barlow as a tackler. Uh, I've gone Stringer and Franklin. Now, obviously, I hope Stringer does nothing as well, but, you know, for, <laughs> but in a way, I kind of do. Um... I've gone to Harakis at utility because like Zach Merritt, he's been really good the first few weeks as well. Um, he's probably averaging my best as my best utility at the moment, so I've gone with Zaharakis and taken Hanabri out. 
and moved Hanover into the midfield. Uh, at the moment, I've got Brad Ebert in the midfield at the moment, um, but I might swap him with Billy Hartung. I'm not sure yet. And uh, yeah, yeah uh, I saw there. And uh, Nick Nat and Scott Thompson and Jack Viney. So, how do you see our Nick game? Nat, Nick Nat. Yeah, I think Nick Nat will jump all over, all over Sam Lane's crooked knee. So I'm not worried about that. I still think Nick Nat no. will get 35 to 40. And if Fremantle do lock it up, then no. better. So what do you think of our matchup? It's going to be good, actually. I'm pretty... Uh, I'm like, normally, it will start the, the first round one, I'll be very scared. But this, this round, I'm feeling a little bit more confident. Uh, now I know... I've got my half back and uh, my utility a bit more right. But, um, look, uh, having, uh, I reckon um, Tomahawk's going to have a field day with Brisbane. So I know Hawk is, Tomahawk's going to go all right. And um, I'm hoping that Aaron Rawls will sneak for a couple of goals in utility against a shitty Carlton team. Um, and then uh, you can always count on Joe Lewis doing all right. Um, Mummy against uh, Tippett. I think Mummy should go uh, well. So I, I think I'm going to get a decent score. It's just you might get an even more decent score. Well, we'll see what happens. I mean, both, if, if you look at it, the I mean, matchups are against some hard teams, so we'll see what happens. But going off the um, going off the projections and who knows what next team's going to be, but that looks to be the highest scoring game. Our game and that game looks to be the two highest scoring games. The lowest game looks to be uh, Kenner versus Vossi. Um, two, old, two old cricket mates there. Um, so that could be the dud game going around. And again, that, you know, the who gives a shit cup between no dumplings and on rolling. So we'll see, we'll see how it goes there. But um, who knows what happens after round three. So, yeah, Steph, I, I want to thank you for coming aboard today, for joining in. Once again, if anyone else wants to come into here, they're more than welcome to. Any, any last thoughts before I let you go? Yeah, uh, two things. Coley, if you're watching, I'm going to give you a call. I want to organise a trade with uh, Steph Martin. And the other thing was, Chris, I'm not coming on Sunday anymore to the Dogs game. Uh, we'll be too tired after Linda's sister's wedding. I'm sorry, what? But you would have been still... <laughs> well, I'm going to the Dogs game. We're not going anymore, so I'm just letting you know. But you wouldn't take the kids. You wouldn't be still with the family anyway, wouldn't you? Well, yeah, that's true too. So I wouldn't be able to have any banter anyway, so you'd be shit. But we're not going, so it doesn't matter. Oh, well, well, well. So, yeah. All right. Well, thanks very much, Steph, for, for joining us today. Uh, I don't wish you luck at all this week. But uh, go, go the Hawks, mate. Yeah, that's right. Well, I'll be watching Tippett for Mick and hoping he has a shit game because he's against my mummy. <laughs> all right, buddy. See ya. <laughs> see ya, mate. And, and see ya, everyone.